All right, so today we have a Wells Gardner K7400. I purchased this from somebody who had this in a Ms. Pac-Man Galaga 20th anniversary combo and it had some uh, vertical hold problems. So they did some reflow on it and then after that it went to complete horizontal collapse. So they just threw their hands up and said, hey, you know, I'm just gonna sell this. Whoever wants it can have it. So I bought it from that person. And as soon as I got it, I inspected it and it's, it's somewhat butchered, uh, but it does operate. And I wanted to verify that it actually had collapsed. I didn't see anything that was wrong, no solder bridges or anything that the person had done when they reflowed it. I didn't see any problems. So I wanted to test it before I really went any, any further. So if we turn the test pattern generator on, we're all hooked up. If I turn it on, it does turn on and operate. However, it is not in vertical collapse. It works just fine, except that we have vertical linearity problems and vertical hold problems. You can see that the image is shifted, and if, if you watch it here, it's kind of creeping down, creeping down, creeping down, creeping down all by itself, and then it starts to roll. And I think this is what the, the seller was talking about. Uh, so I bought it from him in the condition where I thought it was in horizontal collapse, but it turns out it that's not the case. I think he might not have hooked it up properly when he hooked it back up after reflowing it, because obviously you can see it's not collapsed, but it is. it does have vertical hold problems. You can see it just creeps up and down, and it's not steadily, well now it is steadily scrolling, and then it's, now it's stopped again, it's creeping, creeping. <laughs> so I've tried to make all the proper adjustments that you can do here. If we adjust uh, vertical hold here, I can somewhat, see I can't get it to lock on. It goes that way, if I go the other way, it slows down a bit, but never quite stops. I can get it to stop, but then it just starts creeping again one way or the other. So there definitely has problems. Uh, it's got a cap kit, but only kind of a partial cap kit. They didn't change the bipolar cap out. And like I say, there's a number of pads that are somewhat butchered and there's two or three pads on the flyback that are lifted. There's lifted pads on some of the caps. Uh, not a very good job was done. Uh, and it wasn't the seller who did the work, it was somebody else. There's a sticker on the flyback, I'll show that later. But the main problem now is that I can't get it to stop scrolling vertically. So we need to take it back off the tube and do all the repair and the rework and see if we can get this to stop scrolling and get it to be good. I don't think the B plus is set properly because the pot is way higher than it should be. So I think we need to adjust B plus. I'm going to redo the cap kit because some of these caps are an unknown brand I never heard of before. So we're going to do all the rework and the inspection and everything we normally do. I'll show off what the condition of this is here momentarily. And then after we do all the rework and see if we can get this to stop scrolling. Um, everything else seems okay. I can actually get it to stop scrolling if I try. Uh, but when I do, the bottom of the screen is... Uh, kind of squished. I can't Yeah, there's something going on here. See um, If I'm just touching the back of this it goes wonky Slows down speeds up stops and goes the other way just from touching the back of it. So um, I think what I might do first is swap out the remote adjustment board just to rule out the pots or anything wrong with this It also loses green if I go to the RGB here if I can get it to, to slow down Slow down here. Nope. That's slower. There we go. See, I got it to stop. I can get it to stop, but it's not synced. If I tap on the board here, I'm, I lose green. I think the solder joints on the interconnect cable here at the chassis are back and wiggle this around. See, all I'm doing is bending this a bit and we're losing the green. So that's one of those, all the header pins for the remote adjustment board and all the header pins for the neck interconnect cable, the, both these cables, I always reflow all these pins on both the, the main board and the neck board because of that issue right there is that this can get tweaked and, and just cause issues like this. So when you're missing a color, it may not be a neck board problem, it could very well be solder joints on the interconnect cable. So anyway, we have green, uh, intermittent green to tackle. We've got vertical hold to tackle. Um, we need to check our B plus and redo the cap kit and reflow everything and kind of go from there. But let me turn this off and see if I can, um, let's try and 
a different remote board. I've got a whole box of remote boards here. Um, here's one, but someone has stolen the contrast pot. Um, let's see, go ahead and go down here. Looks like that I can't freaking get. Nope, that's K7000. No, I do, but that's a U2000 one with missing pots. Um, I guess we'll just dump, dump this out here. Um, no, this is for a K... A U5000 and the U2000 because the H hold pot is there. We don't need that won't work. There's another one, 2000, 5000. That won't work. Uh, there's one with a missing V hold pot. That won't work. Here's one with a missing height pot. That won't work. Here we go. <laughs> uh, Paradise Arcade to the rescue. So I do have one here. Let's throw this one in here and see what happens with this one. Uh, just to make sure that uh, we don't have an issue with the pot or the remote board or something like that. All right, so let's see what this one does here. Okay, back on. And okay, vertical hold is this one, and okay, it is not the remote board or the pot. Okay, well, we ruled that out. All right, so now let's get this back off the tube and back on the uh, the bench here, and let's go through and see if we can figure out what's going on. All right, so here we have the entire chassis back off of the tube on the bench. And just to go over a couple of things, the first thing I noticed with the, is that there is a jumper, what looks like some type of jumper across here that somebody has installed. Now, I, I think I recall in the past that I saw this before in, in the past, but I don't know what the purpose of this is because it's totally bypassing uh, the resistor right here. So. Um, looks like this resistor has been replaced and then somebody installed a jumper across here for some reason and I don't know why but uh, you saw it was operating just fine so I guess we could leave it I don't know what the purpose of this is but since it was working and didn't appear to affect it negatively we'll just leave it uh, but the neck board has been reworked a little bit we got some lifted traces on the green which we always have uh, no big deal I can take care of all that um, but yeah, so the neck board isn't too bad. There's just an anomaly here of this jumper and the normal damage traces for that. So let's go ahead and just disconnect this and, and get this out of our way. So there's that off. Now, if we look real quick at why we were missing the green, um, I don't, I think it's gonna be hard to see here. I think we just got some cracked joints. Um, I think right here is cracked. I don't think that's the green. I haven't followed this through. But what was happening was, is I was just, I was wiggling this connector and just tapping on the edge of the board. We were losing green, losing green, losing green, losing green, losing green. So there's something wrong with this. So I'm going to, I don't think it's a problem with the connector. The connector's in good, good shape. So I think what we're going to do is just reflow. I always reflow all these header pins here, and I always reflow all of these header pins here for the remote board. So we'll get that done. Uh, but then I also mentioned the person who worked on this previously, Moody's Amusement Service. Well, uh, let's see, what that six thirteen thirteen? So almost ten years ago. <laughs> Uh, so I'll give them the benefit of the doubt working on this 10 years ago, but uh, if they were the ones that did this work I'm, I'm about to show you, then tisk tisk. Uh, they didn't change the bipolar cap. Nobody ever changes the bi bipolar cap except for me if so, for some reason. Uh, and then the B plus is set to dead center, 
Uh, normally it's not dead center like that, but you can see it's dead center, so I don't think that's proper. I didn't test it beforehand. It didn't matter because we're going to be re readjusting it anyway. Um, but if we look at the main chassis itself, it's not in that bad a shape. It's not dirty. It's very clean. Nothing appears to be bent or broken. Everything is in good shape. But some of these caps I've just never heard of before. Um, which one of these? Suncon? Is that a is that a reputable company or vendor? Suncon? I don't. I've never heard of Suncon before. Um, this cap here, I mentioned before that it wasn't a complete cap kit, so we've got caps in here I never heard of, Suncon, and then this cap here, nobody replaced this one. This is the original cap right there. So, and they didn't change the bipolar cap. This cap here for the vertical, this 1500 microfarad, this one wasn't changed. You can still see the glue on the side of it. Um, looks like they changed the 33 microfarad one next to it. So they changed this one, but not this one. So it's got a partial cap kit. Um, and some bad solder joints and a vertical hold problem. Now let's look at the back side here because it hasn't been completely butchered, but it's it's bad. Get off of there, you. There we go. Alright, so we'll start off with the flyback. Has some lifted pads. Not sure how this happened, but we've got a lifted pad right here. You can see how this is lifted and the trace is lifted off with it. Uh, also right here, this trace and this pad is lifted off. This one's even worse. This one's really bad here. This one's lifted as well right there. This one here is lifted. Uh, the rest of them are in decent shape. Maybe this one a little bit. But there's one right there, yep. So one, two, three, four, five lifted pads. Now I don't know why that happened. Or why someone did that but uh, they obviously didn't have their iron hot enough or something because they damaged that um, and then we have right here we have part of this cap whoever did the cap kit they damaged this pad when they pulled the old cap out and if we keep looking here um, I think that might be about it yeah not too bad but we've got all these pads here, this pad over here, a bunch of rework and reflow in the power supply section. So, you know, it's not too bad. The header yoke pins need re uh, reflow for sure, both the horizontal and the vertical over here. So nothing too bad, um, but it needs all the normal work done to it. So there's no real reason that I'm aware of that would cause that vertical hold to not lock on because that all goes through uh, this U701 and this section over here. So given that this is kind of a partial cap kit, and then here's another example of some cap I'd never heard of. Fong? Chong? C-H-O-N-G? Chong? Ever hear of that brand? <laughs> no. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to just go ahead, the preliminary work for this to try and get this fixed is I'm just going to do a full cap kit and a full reflow and a little bit better inspection just to make sure nothing else is amiss. We know that we know it's functional, so nothing is actually faulty. I just think we just need to do a cap kit and a reflow and I'm very likely fix the problem. Uh, I need to do the rework on the neck board, get the pads fixed. Um, then we'll go over that when I get that done and reflow everything on here. But the, the main way that I fix these pads is I remove all of the existing solder and then I take a little bit of uh, super glue and super glue the pad back down and then as I heat up and add new solder I use the tweezers to hold the pad down uh, and then put the new solder on and then with the, the fact of pushing the, the pad down when it's warm and putting new solder on it keeps it down after holding it down here, once it liquefies and you hold it down, then it hardens. You can let go and then the uh, the act of pushing it down and putting new solder on will hold it down to the glue. So that's the real main way that we do that. So if, I guess we could do one as an example. Let's do the worst one first here. Let's do the worst one first. Let's get... Oh, I turned my iron off for some reason. I think I walked away and came back and... Didn't want it to be on while I was away. And let's get 
some of this glue loose out of here. Alright, that should work. Hopefully anyway. Yep, that'll work. Okay, now let's turn the fan on. I'm just waiting for the iron to heat up here real quick. Okay, we're at 600. That should suffice. All right, so let's... Okay. So, let's see how bad that is. Uh... Okay, it's not too bad. Oh yeah, okay, it is. Yeah. It was just stuck on the, the lead there. So, yeah, you can see just how much of that is lifted off. So what we'll do is we'll just add a little bit of glue here. Around both sides. Then we'll place this back over leg and kind of massage it down all right then we will add some new solder to it And then as that flows, we will just press it down with one of the pieces of the, uh, the tweezers here and hold it in place. And now, once that glue dries, it should be nice and flat. And that's what I do for all these that have lifted like that. Yep, and then uh, it's just a matter of cleaning it up. So it may not look fantastic, but that is my method for doing that. You may have other methods uh, to each their own, but with that glue underneath the part that was lifted and then around this part here that'll hold it down with the solder, I think that should end up being just fine. So I'm gonna do the same thing for these other one, two, three, four pads here. Uh, if as need be, then I'm going to do all the cap kit and the reflow and the inspection, make sure nothing is amiss. If I find something amiss, I'll talk about it when I come back. But I'm going to cut away. I'm going to do the uh, the cap kit, the reflow, the, all the rework, especially on what I mentioned before about the header pins, um, video header pins, power header pins, all that kind of stuff, anything else and everything else that might need it. We'll do the rework on the neck board. I'll show that off when that's done. So when I come back, I have all the work done, and then we'll be ready to test it again and see if it was just bad caps or bad solder joint and then uh, if not we'll have to troubleshoot further and see where we're at from that point so here we go all right so all the work is now done uh, cap kit reflow inspection i didn't find anything out of whack or anything amiss except for one thing uh, c716 right here is supposed to be a 250 volt one microfarad but somebody had a 250 volt 2.2 microfarad installed, so that was wrong. I don't know what effect that would have, but that's the only thing that I found. I didn't see anything that was like, you know, broken traces or missing pads or uh, bad solder joints. I mean, everything looked relatively okay. Uh, after the inspection, so I went ahead and did the cap kit and the reflow, uh, rebuilt the neck board as required. I reflowed even the uh, remote board, even though we know it was okay. I got all the header pins for the remote board and the neck board interface cable, the uh, video header pins, the AC input header pins that are always cracked, everything and anything that, that needs reflowed has got hit and done. Uh, so yeah, that's about it. The only thing left is to get it on the tube and give it a test. I got all of the neck board rework done, I got uh, everything cleaned up and sprayed the alcohol, cleaned it all off, good to go. Uh, the back side here just as well, got the, the flyback pads pushed down and glued in place, everything reflowed and done, all this cleaned up as well. 
So now let's go ahead and power it up and see if our vertical hold problem is solved. If not, we'll have to continue on with troubleshooting. Uh, and then we also need to verify that our B plus is set properly. I also noticed that somebody has messed with, while I was working on this, somebody has messed with the uh, shutdown pot and cut all the glue off of it and it does move so we need to make sure that our shutdown pot is adjusted to 0.1 volts DC on our test point here. Uh, this test point should be 0.1 volts DC and then on our B plus test point which is right here uh, right here, TP202 B+, plus, there's a test point that needs to be 117 volts under operation. If not, we can adjust our B+. Plus. If we don't have 0 0.1 for shutdown, we can adjust the shutdown and go from there. So let's get this on a picture tube, get it all set up and ready to turn on. And let's see if our vertical hold problem is solved. If it is, we'll make our adjustments and we'll call this done. Okay, all on the tube, hooked up, ready to go. Let's turn on the test pattern generator. And I have not, oh, hang on, I forgot. I just realized I forgot to hook up my power here. There we go. Okay, so I have not uh, adjusted any settings or anything. All I did was the rebuild and then we're ready to test again. So um, I have the B plus set up to make sure we're at 117. If not, uh, let's grab the screwdriver. Okay, uh, that's on. Let's make sure I didn't blow anything up or cause any damage. That's step number one, and then we'll see if I still have the hold problem. Hopefully it's fixed. If not, we'll continue on, but before we do that, we'll test all of our test points and everything. So here we go, one, two, three. Okay, we come to life and we're at, well, look at that. <laughs> 117 exactly. Awesome. What about our hold problem? Uh, well, we're stable, but we're looking for this to lock on as soon as I adjust it here. Vertical hold. Here we go. Yes! <laughs> Vertical hold. I'm turning it, and it's rotating. Now, if I go the other way, it should lock right on immediately. Boom! Yes, I'm turning to the right, turn 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 to the right. Wow, look at that. I'm all the way to the right. Let's use the screwdriver for illustration here. Okay, so I'm all the way to the right with this pot. Now I'm going to turn it. As I turn it, um, let's go all the way to the right. Let's turn to the left. And it's still stable, still stable. There it goes. Turn back to the right. Lock right on. And I'm turning, 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 turning. And that's all the way to the right. So I've got, I can sit here and turn this back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and it does not lose hold until I get to roughly there. And then turn back to the right a bit, lock right back on. Okay, so our vertical hold problem is now solved. I am absolutely confident it's probably bad caps. Uh, like I say, I didn't see any obvious bad solder joints or anything. I think we just simply had an issue of bad caps, uh, especially with some of those I'd never heard of before. So cap kit solved our main problem, uh, and we are fully operational, and we're at, well, well now we're 116.7, but if I adjust, or if I hit the, uh, change the screen here, 116.1, ah, there is our color bars. Yeah, so let's tweak this up a bit more because it should be on our color bars here. We should have uh, 117. So let's tweak this a bit here. And we're looking to get about 117. Let's go, let's go to right about there. 117.4. Okay. So uh, let's go back to this screen. 117.1. Color bars are 117.6. Uh, red RGB is 117.5. That's the grayscale screen is 117.0, 117.8 for all red. So we're at 117, we'll call that good. Now we need to move this over to our shutdown pot uh, test point, which is uh, right. I can't, I lost it. Okay, it's right here. Right there. And we should have 0 0.1. Or 0 0.01. Mm, that needs to be 0.1. So we're going to have to adjust this to, z to point 0 0.1. 
Is it? Uh, am I wrong? Is, is it supposed to? It's supposed to be zero point one, or is it point zero one? Uh, sorry, it's a reflection there. I don't even. But I don't know if I'm even on the. Okay, I'm definitely hooked up to it. Well, maybe it's supposed to be point zero one. Let me look here. Um. Actually, it might take me a minute to look it up. I could have swore it was supposed to be 0 0.1, but you know, in all my in my head here, as the as the thoughts go through, sometimes they don't stick around. They they go run in one uh, neuron and out the other. So it could be 0 0.01. Let me find that out. But for now, I think uh, we're good to go. Let's use an actual PCB. We'll hook up uh, Mortal Kombat here. You know what? Let me cut away. I'll find out what this is supposed to be set to. If it's supposed to be 0.1 or 0.01. It's looking like it's supposed to be 0.01. And then I'll have the MK1 hooked up and we'll test to see what it looks like with an actual PCB. All right, so looking it up here in the manual, you can go to the test points here and you can see TP201 is supposed to be 0.1. So I was correct, it's supposed to be 0 0.1, but we're at 0 0.01. So we need to adjust this pot until we get to 0.1. If I go to the left, it doesn't really make much difference. So if we go back to the right, there we go, okay, 0.1. And this is tricky. There, there we go. 0 0.1. All right. So there we go. Shut down pots adjusted properly, and I hooked up the MK1 board, and I haven't adjusted anything. So let's go ahead and just acknowledge this. And um, oh yeah, we need to do some major adjustments here. So I'm gonna get the tripod set up. We'll go through, and make some adjustments, see how well we can make this look, and we'll call this done. All right. So again, my MK1 board's having issues. Um, that's why it's a test board. So disregard all of the the messed up screen because that's a, a board issue and not a chassis problem or monitor problem. So now let's see if we can make some adjustments here. Let's do contrast. Let's turn brightness down, contrast down. Let's turn up our flyback until we get a decent... Okay, we'll go right about there. Now let's do... Brightness until the background is no longer black. So roughly, oh no, I need to turn the flyback up a bit more. Flyback's down too far. There we go. Okay, so now if you look closely, you can see that the background is not black anymore when the screen changes. Uh, maybe it's hard to see. Let's zoom up. Let's go up here and zoom in. There you go. So now you want to turn the brightness down until the background is black, which is right there. That's where we want to keep our flyback and our, and our uh, brightness. Now let's turn up our contrast a bit. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, each position. Actually, let's go into a match here. Again, disregard all of this stuff. position. We'll put it right there. Uh, width, let's crank the width down a bit. Vertical position, we want to go right about here. Oh uh, man, that contrast is... I'll put it right about there. And let's turn our focus a bit. Right there. We're too green. And blue a bit. Uh, that's not too bad. Need to do a bit more tweaking, but um, we'll go with some red here. Turn blue down a bit, green down a bit. Yeah, that's not bad. Again, the red looks really washed out in, in camera, but in person it's nice and vibrant. I don't understand why it's doing that in camera. 
you know what I want to do is let's try let's switch over to Rampage World Tour here Let's turn our contrast down a bit, brighten this up a bit. That's better. We're still too green. Let's turn our dry pots to the center. Right there. And we'll put all of our bias pots about 25%. And we'll start there as a baseline. Okay. And initially that's not too bad. Yeah, that's not bad at all. A little gousing here in the corner, but hey, not too bad at all. <laughs> I didn't know you could flap. Anyway, yeah, well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen, a repaired K7400. I just simply had bad caps, maybe, maybe a couple bad solder joints, but I don't think so. I think our vertical hold problem was caps. Uh, nice full reflow and rebuild, and uh, it's good to go. Of course, I need to leave it on for a while and make sure that uh, we don't have any any brightness drift or focus drift where it needs a new flyback. But given the, the cleanliness of the chassis, I don't think it had a, a long life. The neckboard transistors weren't burned up and the neckboard wasn't burned up. So I think it has a relatively low life on this chassis. So I think we'll be okay flyback wise. But yeah, there you go. So go in the menu here so we can we can talk but uh yeah thanks for watching uh, hopefully you learned something like share and subscribe i appreciate it and i have another chassis on the heels of this one that i think you're going to enjoy that you haven't seen before uh, featured on the channel so uh, stay tuned for that otherwise i appreciate it like share and subscribe and we'll see you next time